It was my cross you bore, so I could live in the freedom you died for. And now my life is yours, and I will sing of your goodness forevermore. Worthy is your name. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Sunday service. Pastor Todd Coconado here. So thankful that you've joined us this week as we're going to get into a powerful message about the topic of repentance. Now, people will say repentance. I don't want to hear about repentance. It's not a very popular topic, but it is one that if you do listen to this message and you apply what the word of God says, it will set you up for success 
in your walk with Jesus Christ. It's actually one of the most important things that we as believers can understand and walk out. We can be like King David and be good repenters. And I really believe that no revival ever takes place without repentance, true repentance. And revival starts in our heart. And God has been doing something very powerful in my own life. He's been working on my heart in a way that I've never felt so tender in the Lord. Uh, I've never felt his presence so strong as I feel it now. Um, I have a hope. I have so much joy in my spirit, regardless of all the assignments of the enemy and the attacks of the enemy. I found a peace and a joy in the Lord through his Holy Spirit, even in the times that we're in. And I believe this journey begins at repentance. And so we're going to talk about this this morning. If you go ahead and join me in prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit, we thank you that you would use me right now to speak the words out of your heart today, out of your word. And I pray that every person listening would get something from this. I pray every person listening wouldn't just tune off right now because they hear the word repentance and they say, well, what could this have to do with me? I pray, Lord God, that every person tunes in right now that every person really listens to your heart because this is something that you speak about in the, in the red letters in the Bible. Lord Jesus, you, you spoke about this. And I pray that we would listen because you say, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. And I believe this will bring blessing and transformation in many people's lives, even as they listen today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm going to read a little bit from my notes. Today, we are going to be diving deeply into the profound and transformative concept of repentance. Why is it transformative? Because if you actually do what the Bible says, it will change every single aspect of your life. How do I know that? Well, it happened in my life. Uh, I was a dirty sinner. Now, have I figured everything out at this point? No. Uh, Do I still sin? Yes. But the deal is, is that I'm not living a lifestyle of sin and I'm always growing in the Lord. And when I find a, we just had a men's meeting on Saturday. What I find is that in in church today, a lot of people feel like they have to put on a veneer. They got to pretend like they got everything figured out. They're this perfect Christian. They don't want to share. And look, I've been guilty of this, just like all of you. Uh, You know, a lot of times we don't want to share the struggles that we're going through, different things that we're going through, because we're honestly afraid of what people are going to say, or they're going to judge us, or they're going to gossip about us. So a lot of times we don't get the healing and deliverance that we need because we don't want to bring forth what's our secret sin or something that we do that we know doesn't please God. But if people knew about it, you know, they they would be uh, treating us differently. So a lot of times we bury it, we hide it. And I believe this is a time where God is saying, look, get your house in order. You know, I'm giving you this opportunity. I'm giving you more time. And I'm speaking to myself. I'm speaking to all of us. Giving you more time. But you got to get your house in order. This is a time of consecration. It's a time to get serious about our walk. We know the hour is late. We know we're in the end times. But one of the the key themes of the scripture is repentance. And this is a subject matter that, for the most part, has not been a main subject in the church for a long time. So it is transformative. It is a concept that is absolutely transformative. It will change everything. I could not go back to the former version of me. That former version of me is not existing at this point. It's gone. God has done a new thing in my life. Behold, all things are new. The old has passed away. He He has thrown my past and your past into the sea of forgetfulness. God doesn't even remember it, only if we go back to our vomit and we continue in repetitive sin. So repentance is not merely an act of remorse. It's not merely an act of sorrow or past wrongdoing. It is a journey in our spiritual walk and development, okay? And it is of turning away from sin and returning to God. And this is something that we have to do every single day. What do you mean every day, Todd? Well, the Bible says, die to your flesh daily. So obviously the Bible knows that our battle is not against flesh and blood. God wanted us to understand It is not a flesh and blood battle. It's a spiritual battle for our soul, for our future, for our lives, for our family. And we've got to die to our flesh daily. And we've got to take every thought captive. And sometimes this is easier said than done, right? So it's a turning away from sin and returning to God. And we're going to explore the scriptures together about repentance. And let us open our hearts today. And, and open our mind to what God is saying through his holy word and allow him to guide us on the path of repentance. And what, what happens when you repent is it brings restoration in your life. 
I want to see you restored. But even more than I want to see you restored, God wants to see you fully restored. He wants you to have peace. He wants you to be restored. He wants you to just be in such a blessed state of existence in it, but not of it. Having the joy of the Lord and the peace of the Lord and the rest of the Lord in your life. So scripture number one is Matthew 4, 17, Matthew 4, 17. And it says this, from the time Jesus began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So let me read the commentary. In this verse, Jesus is issuing a clear and urgent call to repentance. Some say, did Jesus call for repentance? Yes. Did John the Baptist call for repentance? Yes. But did Jesus call? Yes, he did. Okay, Jesus himself said, from that time, Jesus began to preach uh, and say, repent for the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he issues this clear and urgent call. He emphasizes the imminence of the kingdom of heaven and invites us all to turn away from our sins and align ourselves with God's will for our life. Listen, forever the time, you know, whatever amount of time it is that you listen to these broadcasts, that you're part of this community, uh, maybe you tune in weekly, maybe you only tune in once in a while, maybe this is the first time you've ever heard one of our broadcasts, but I will tell you this, for as ever long as you're here, okay, I will tell you as a pastor, the best way that you can pray, the best way that you can live your life is not through our own fleshly vain imaginations and the things that we desire, even though if we have the desires that are God's desires, we will see those things. But a lot of times we have our own uh, path that we want to walk and it's not God's path. And so God being the author and the finisher of our faith, being the potter, we're the clay. If we submit to his will, okay, get this. If we submit to his will, it is the absolute best place that we can be in our life. So what we really want to do is what Jesus said, not, not our will, my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. And, and that's the same as we as believers need to look at what Jesus said and did and, and say the same thing for our life. Is look, I have things that I desire. I have things that I want. And if they're in alignment with God and his will, then those things will happen. He'll bless us. Many things that we've been blessed with, I didn't even think of. God just blessed us. Some of the things I wanted didn't happen. Some of the prayers I prayed didn't answer, you know, didn't get answered by God. But the deal is, is that if I continue to seek the face of God and his will, and I get in accordance to his will, alignment with his will, that's going to be the best scenario for my life. It's going to be the best scenario for your life. So the deal is this, okay? Uh, The kingdom of heaven invites all to turn away from sin and align themselves with God's will. Now, easier said than done, but if you have a... um, something in your life that's that you know, an addiction or you know you're looking at something you shouldn't be looking at you're doing a drug that you shouldn't be doing you have an alcohol addiction you have a pornography addiction you have a sex addiction you have a food addiction whatever the addiction is we can call upon the name of the lord we can call upon the holy spirit in that moment of weakness in our moment of weakness he is strong and so what god wants us to learn to do i often talk about trusting him But what else he wants us to do is to call upon him in a time of weakness. What do I mean? Look, you're getting pulled. It's nighttime. Your spouse is sleeping. You know, you're you're, you're looking at something you shouldn't be looking at on the computer. Oh, gosh, I know I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm feeling this pull. And for some reason, I'm, I'm looking at this. At that moment, you have to say, Holy Spirit, I need your strength. Holy Spirit, give me strength right now not to engage in this sin. The minute you do that, listen to me, the minute you do that, a supernatural strength comes upon you, a strength that you would not otherwise have. If you call upon the name of the Lord, Bible says those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Whatever the addiction is, I have an addiction with eating, eating, you know, I eat too much, whatever. Call upon the Lord. Lord, I am feeling this, this need to go and just stuff my face right now. And I know it's not of you. I know it's an addiction. I need your strength, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will give you the strength in that moment. But one of our biggest problems is we don't call upon the Lord. We, we think we're going to be able to do these things on our own strength. But I'm going to tell you, after being in ministry for over 20 years, we're not going to have the strength on our own. We've got to rely on the strength of the Holy Spirit. That's why I often talk about being spirit-filled, reliance on the Holy Spirit, um, understanding that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We don't want to defy the temple But this is very important for a Christian to understand. We have to call upon the Lord. We've got in our in our time of need, he is our very present help in time of need. He will not give us 
Hear this. He will not give you more than you're able to handle. He will not give you a temptation that, that can overtake you. And every single temptation, okay, every single temptation, if we call upon the Lord, he will give us enough strength. He is enough, my friends. And so this is a very important concept. From the time that Jesus began to preach, this is from the very beginning of his ministry in earth, his earthly ministry. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now in the Greek, the word repentance is metano, M-E-T-A-N-O-E-O. So it's like meta or It's kind of hard to say, which means change, change one's mind or purpose to repent change one's mind or purpose. So in the world, when I was in the world, it was about how can I be successful? How can I uh, attain a certain level of prominence in, in Hollywood? You know, when I was in my career in Hollywood, you know, how can I do these different things in the business world? How can I move up the, the, the ladder? How can I get promotion? How can I get more and more earthly desires, fleshly desires? Now, are all those things bad? Not always. They can be used for the kingdom as long as they're not an idol. But the deal is, though, is our... Are in, in Jesus Christ, it's not those things that we look to for success. What we look to is our walk, the state of our heart, you know? And so the Greek word says, look, it says, change your mind. How are you changing your mind? How? It's by the Holy Spirit. Because we are not conformed to the things of this world, but we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. And our mind is renewed by submitting to the will of God, by submitting, by knowing his word and knowing what he desires for our life, right? Amen? In the Hebrew, the concept of repentance is uh, represented by the word shove. So it's S-H-U-V, which means to turn back or to return. So in this case, what it's saying is to return to our first love, Jesus Christ, to turn away from the, from the bad path that we're on and to go down the path of the light, the path of Jesus Christ. Okay, Scripture 2, Acts 3.19. Acts 3.19, it says, Repent, therefore, and what? Be converted. Be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. I love this Scripture, friends. I love this Scripture. Acts 3.19, repent, therefore, and be converted. So a lot of folks are in the misconception, the misunderstanding that you raise your hand and you give your heart to the Lord and you don't need to repent. That is a lie from the pit of hell because what is repentance in the Greek? It's to change your mind. You're now living the transformed mind lifestyle. You're not living the conform life anymore. So there has to be a transformative process, okay? That's why we're going to the Greek and the Hebrew. What does the Hebrew say? It means to return, return to your first love, return to the, to the path that God made you, he created you for. When you were born, before you were in your womb, I knew you. You know, he created us, the Lord. The, our, our steps are ordered by God, but when we get out of alignment with God's will and his purpose and we get into sin, that deviates the plan of God and it opens the door for the enemy's plan in our life. So we want to be returning to our first love, returning to the path that God made for us. So change your mind, transform mind, and return to God. So Acts 2, repenting and being converted that your sins may be blotted out. So remember when I said your sins are thrown in the sea of forgetfulness? You know, the devil often will use our past against us. He is the accuser of the brethren. He will find something in your life that you did at some point that you're guilty of or that you are ashamed of or that you shouldn't have done, a sin that you allowed in your life in a broken state. And that could have been 20 years ago. It could be 15 years ago, 10 years ago. But the enemy wants to bring it back up. He wants to accuse you. And so this is why the Lord, though, says if you're in him, what happens? Your sins are blotted out. Now, this is a very important concept because when you have an open door to sin in your life and you are involved in repetitive sin that you know is wrong, that gives the enemy the opportunity to accuse you. So in Jesus Christ, in his perfect will for you, in the transformed mind state, in the state where you are now back to your first love, Jesus Christ, you're in your purpose, you're in the will of God for your life. The open door is only open through the act of, of willing sin. Willing sin. Now, does that mean bad things won't happen to you? No. But what it means is in the courts of heaven and in the, in the, in the way that things are, are, are run according to the spiritual dynamics of the word of God is that 
Nothing will touch you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. And so none of these things are going to touch you except when you open the door and that gives Satan the legal right then to come in and to accuse you and there will be consequences because the wages of sin are death. Does that make sense? It's, it's actually, once you understand this concept, you can be completely set up for success. Now, will you ever attain perfection or be able not to sin? No, there's going to be times in your life when you're going to sin like daily. But the deal is, is you're not going to be foolish to engage in the repetitive sins that are, you know, have overtaken most of the world. I mean, the average American today is involved in many different sinful activities, and that's opened the door to so many different things in their life. And they don't even realize why they have all these problems, why they have all, the, the, all these issues. Uh, you know, their mind is is messed up. They they have a, a you know an unstable mind because a double manned mind is unstable in all his ways. Uh, you know, they're 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 confused. They're depressed. They're given to all these assignments and things like that. And Christians are too, by the way, when they open these these doors up. So God wants us to, to be consecrated, to come out from among them. And he desires that for us so that we don't have these open doors. So you got to listen to what he's saying. So the first thing you do is repent. Then you're converted. You give up the lifestyle of sin and you say, Lord, I love you. So I'm going to obey your commands. So you do everything in your power to resist the devil. What happens when you resist the devil? He's got to flee. What did Jesus do when the devil tempted him in, in you know, in the uh, mountaintop? He said, you know, get behind me, Satan. It is written. He used the sword. And he resisted the devil. And what happened? He had to flee. So he was showing us what to do. So listen to this, okay? Repent and then be converted that your sins will be blotted out. They're throwing the sea of forgetfulness. So that times of what? Refreshing. Times of refreshing in the presence of the Lord and true renewal. This is where that joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength. This is where the joy comes from, friends, is because now we've given up that stupid, evil, wicked plot and scheme of the devil against our life, the sin, we, we've given up the lifestyle of sin, we've repented, we've converted, our, our sins are thrown in the sea of forgetfulness, they're blotted out, and now what happens after that, you're able to live in a, in a peace, in a time of refreshing, and in the presence of the Most High God. This is Satan's worst nightmare. He does not want a Christian living in the peace that passes understanding and, and living in the presence of the Lord. He doesn't want you being in your prayer closet. He doesn't want you having an active prayer life. So let's go to the next one. Uh, the Greek word for repentance in this case is metatonia, which, so this is in the scripture that I'm just talking about here. And, and it, so there's different, uh, so even though the word repentance is used in the English, uh, the Greek meanings of some of these uh, terms in the different scriptures are different. This is why I want to go to the Greek and the Hebrew. So the 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 uh, for this particular scripture, it's M E T A N O I A, and it designates a change of mind or heart leading to a transformed transformation of life, a transformative life. So in this scripture where he's saying repent, so let's put it in the terms of the Greek, okay? So it says repent therefore and be converted. What he, what he's saying is he's saying have a change of mind and heart that's going to lead to a complete transformation in your life. Whoa. Are, are you getting what's happening here? So, so Acts chapter 2, if we take that word repent there that's being used, and we talk about it in the Greek and the Hebrew, this is what the Scripture would read. It would read, um, have a change of mind and your heart that's going to lead to a transformed life and be converted. I mean, think about what God is giving us here. He's giving us the tools that we need to understand how to live the spirit form life, how to live in true life in Jesus Christ. So let's now go to the Hebrew. Uh, this, this word repentance is closely associated with the concept of teshuva, teshuva, which signifies the return or the restoration to God. So, so it, now, using both the Greek and the Hebrew, okay, and I hope this is okay with you guys, let, let's look at this scripture in a different light right now. So it says, repent, therefore, and be converted. So it's, this is what it says. It says, um, it says you're going to have a change of heart leading to transformation in your life, which is going to signify a return and a restoration to God, and therefore you're converted. Whoa. Is anybody getting anything from this today? That's deep. That's why I like sometimes going to the Greek and the Hebrew. So just think about what he's saying. This is available to all of us. 
And we should all be walking in this true transformed mind state, this complete state of, of being out of this world and the worries and the fears and the concerns, even though we're in it, we're not of it. We're citizens of heaven. And so we have joy, we have peace, we have rest. We are living the transformed life, not the conformed life. And we can be refreshed in the presence of the Lord. Now, why am I talking about this now? Because the world is on fire. There's so much going on right now in the world. And I got, you know, all my friends and even myself, we've talked about the digital currency. We've talked about the possibility of them faking an alien invasion. We've talked about, um, you know, the, the, the red heifers in Israel, the solar eclipse that's happening, the possibility of World War Three. I mean, you could just get in all of it, all the, you know, the elections and everything that's happening in the United States right now, what they're doing with our kids, what's happening at the southern border, on and on and on and on. And while it's important to be watchmen so we can pray down those things and we can take a stand for righteousness and be, uh, you know, in alignment with the Holy Spirit and in utilizing the Holy Spirit and in prayer to, to pray against the evil schemes and plots against our nation and against our children. But here's the deal. We can live. We can live. Even though we're in these things and we're doing, we're, we don't have our heads buried. We're not sitting here being like some of these Christians that are acting like it's 1999. None of that stuff. Like, we know these things are happening. We're aware of them. We pray against them. We speak about them. We let people know we're watchmen on the wall. Okay, we expose the evil works of darkness. But here's the thing. We live, this remnant community, if you haven't got anything today, get what, what's happening here in Acts 3.19. We live in the refreshing and in the presence of the Lord. We live in the refreshed state. That's how I can have a smile on my face. That's how I can have hope in the midst of the turmoil. That's how the apostle Paul said to live as Christ, to die as gain. You know, my mind is not going to be messed up by the attacks of the enemy in this hour. I'm going to live in the, in the transformed mind state and I'm going to have the peace of the Lord. Amen. And so are you. Some of you are getting what God is speaking in this hour. I believe he's preparing us as end time warriors to understand the complexity, but yet the simplicity. How is it complex and simple at the same time? Because once you get it and you're like Neo in the Matrix and you understand, yeah, the warfare is going to be there. Yeah, the wicked plans are going to be there. Yeah, they're going to accuse. They're going to scoff. They're going to mock. We're going to deal with spiritual warfare every single day of our life. Some of us will be thrown in prison at some point for the gospel. But here's the deal. We are going to have peace. We are going to have rest. They can't mess with what God has done inside our life, in our heart, and in our mind. And that's why we're transformed. And so, again, the Greek word, it designates a change of mind or heart. You look at it through the biblical lens. You look at it through the spiritual lens. Your heart is never going to go back to your vomit. You're not going to go back to your past lifestyle. You're not going to go back to your past addictions. You are transformed. You are renewed. But the first step, according to the scripture, according to Jesus, is repent and then be converted. We've got to live a repented lifestyle. Now, scripture number three, Luke 15, 7. Luke 15, 7. It says, I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. What is he saying here? Well, he's basically saying repentance brings joy in heaven. The angels rejoice. God rejoices. God rejoices when a sinner turns away from sin and returns to him. We've got to do this. We've got to turn from our sins. Some of you have been holding on to some of these things. What are you waiting for? You're holding yourself back from joy, from peace, from, from your purpose. But even more, you're taking a big risk because when you're in sin, you're on your way to hell. We've got to live repentant, friends. This, this, is a, this is something that God says, if you love me, you obey my commands, right? So it's, it's closely associated with the concept of the return of the restoration to God, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, let me just read this. It brings joy in heaven. God rejoices when a sinner turns away from sin and returns to him. It is a, a cause for celebration among the angels and in the presence of the Almighty. Now, are we going to go back to the Greek word here? Okay, so then this case of repentance, they're once again using that M-E-T-A-N-O-I-A, -A, metonia, highlighting the profound change of heart and direction that occurs in repentance. Okay, so it's a change of heart 
and direction. It's a change in your life. You're not going back to the former version of you. You're not going back to your, your past lifestyle. I've seen this as a pastor. People have been in the Lord for one or two or three years, and then sometimes they bail and they go back to their sin because they say, oh, the warfare was too tough. I just saw Kanye West. You know, he was out there. Now, we don't know if he was ever truly safe. Some people say he was. But the deal is, he's like, well, I prayed and God didn't answer my prayer. So, you know, forget it. I'm leaving Christianity. No, Kanye, that's not the way it works. That's not the way it works. Now, I believe the Holy Spirit is going to go after him. You, get, you know, that uh, God leaves the 99, goes after the one. I believe that this man is going to be chastened. Who the Lord loveth, he chastens, right? I think this man is going to be in utter torment until he comes back to Jesus. He's got to. He's got to because he's already, he already knows too much. And so his story is not over. We're going to see how this develops. But in the Hebrew, the essence of repentance here is, is once again that shuv, which signifies the return the restoration. Scripture number four. Uh, this is Acts 26.20, Acts 26.20. And here's what it says. It says, but declared first those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout all the region of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should what? Repent. They should repent, turn to God. What does it say first before you turn to God? repent repent you change direction you change course and you return to god and what happens and then and then do the works befitting repentance so we're not saved by works but here in acts 20 26 the scripture is definitely showing us that one of the results of your repentance and your change of heart is you are going to do good works so faith without works is dead you know a lot of people say well we're not saved by our works well true but what God's saying here is, look, they should repent, turn to God. And then what happens? You do the works befitting your repented lifestyle. You do the works that, that are befitting to your transformed mind. You're, you're, you're not going to want to do the same stuff you did before. You're not going to want to go to the same places you went before. You're not going to want to be in the dysfunctional relationships and in the brokenness. You're going to fight for your healing. You're going you're gonna to get to a place of health in your mind. You're going to get to it. People say, you know, all these people are messed up today. You know, all these mental illnesses. And look, I'm not saying there aren't mental illnesses, but a lot of these things are spiritual. It's because of open doors. It's because of conformity. It's because of sin. And because there's sin and, and it hasn't been dealt, dealt with or addressed, it's, it's metastasized in that person's life. Many times when these people come to Jesus and get filled with the Holy Spirit and repent, those things fall off. Or at least deliverance is available to them. You understand what I'm saying? So uh, let me go here to Scripture 5, 2 Corinthians 7, 10. 2 Corinthians 7, 10, it says, For godly sorrows produces what? Repentance, leading to salvation. Now, again, what is the action that takes place before the salvation? Repentance. So why isn't this being preached? Many people are just saying, well, you know, if you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, raise your hand. People raise your hand. I'm guilty of this too. But the deal is, is that what God is saying, look, it's not just raising your hand. It's a turning from your old life. You can't go back. You can't keep living. We can't. I can't. We can't keep living the lifestyle that we once lived. God wants us to be living in the transformed mind state. And that's in the refreshing and in the peace and in the unction of the spirit and in the guidance of the spirit. And so the things of this world are going to pass away. When, when life gives you a blow, boom, a right hook and a left hook, and it gives you a big blow, you're able to stand like the tree that's planted by the water because you know to live as Christ, to die as gain. I'm in the joy, I'm in the peace, I'm in the rest, I'm in the refreshing of what happens because I know that I've turned from my wicked lifestyle and I'm in the presence of the Lord. And when I'm in the presence of the Lord, it does not matter the storm that's going on around you because Jesus is in your boat. He's in our boat, friends. He's in our boat. You get anything from this. He's in your boat. No matter what you're going through right now in your life, he's in your boat. But he requires something of us, and it's a transformed mind. It's, it's a true change in our life. For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. Sure it does. Sure it does. Genuine repentance stems from a deep sense of godly sorrow over sin. It is a sorrow that leads to complete transformation and ultimately salvation. In contrast, worldly sorrow, sin, and a sinful lifestyle leads to spiritual death. So many folks are walking around right now spiritually dead. You, you see it. They don't have the joy. 
They don't have it's religion, but they don't have a relationship. They're not walking in that refreshing. They're not walking in that peace. They say they're Christian, and you try to figure out what's different about them. That they're they they don't seem Christian. In my spirit, I'm not picking up the joy. I'm not picking up the peace coming from them. I'm not how are Christians known by their love, uh, the fruit of the spirit. They're not exuding that, but yet they're saying they're Christian. This is the problem. There hasn't been repentance. When there's not a turning away of the old lifestyle, you could say you're Christian all your all your you know you want. You could say it to your blue in the face. But but what's going to produce a true Christian is when there's a transformative situation that has occurred, and that only occurs through repentance. Does that make sense? That's why the devil doesn't want us preaching on repentance. Godly sorrow produces repentance. Hallelujah. Uh, scripture six, Acts two thirty eight. Scripture six, Acts two thirty eight. And then Peter said to him, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus for what? The remission of sins, that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The most important part of Christianity is receiving the Holy Spirit. First, you repent, you be baptized. It's a commandment of the Lord. Is that going to keep you from heaven? No, it's not, but we should be baptized. It's an outward expression of an inward change. But when we get baptized in the name of Jesus, and by the way, we need to be baptized in the Spirit as well. Okay, and what happens? Your sins are blotted out. They're thrown in the sea of forgetfulness, and you will, you will, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I don't know how some Christians are like, well, I'm not spirit-filled. Well, then you're not Christian because the Bible says that the Spirit of God comes and lives in you. The body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So you're going to get the Holy Spirit by doing this. How do I get the Holy Spirit, Todd? Well, here it is. First of all, okay, let, let's go through it again. Peter said to them, what's the first step? Repent. The very first, some of you are watching today and you've been in a church for 10 years, but no one's ever told you, you got to turn from your old lifestyle. You got to stop sleeping with your girlfriend. You got to stop having uh, sex out of marriage. You got to stop doing the things that you've been doing that you know are sin. And you think you're getting away with it. Look, I'm not getting away with anything. You're not getting away with anything. God sees all. And by the way, so does the demonic. The demonic is able to see the sin. The demonic can't read your brain. The, the, Satan isn't omnipresent. But the, the demonic realm does see the sin. Amen? Uh, so you want to receive the gift of the Spirit. Repentance is, is uh, intimately connected with baptism. And it's not just baptism in water. It's baptism in the Spirit. And, and the forgiveness of sins. And it is through repentance and baptism in the name of Jesus that believers receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and experience the remission of sins. It's very important that we understand that. I'm almost done here. Scripture 7, Scripture 7, Revelation 3, uh, 19, Revelation 3, 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. Therefore, be zealous to what? Repent. I'm going to say it again. As many as I love, this is God speaking, I rebuke and I chasten. Therefore, be zealous and what? Repent. Repentance is a response to God's love and his godly loving discipline. If we want to be a rebellious child, don't repent. If we want, if we want to walk in the in the ways of the world and just see the same, more of the same in our life, don't repent. But if you want to have an experience with the Holy Spirit, you want to be in the joy and the peace, walking in the in the in the anointing of the Spirit. Um, you know, doing things like Jesus did, and even greater things according to Scripture. Being in the flow of the call that God has on your life, you want to do that. We got to first repent. Repentance is always the first step to any move of God. Any move of God, there has to be repentance. And it starts in our own personal heart. Your family right now, I don't know who I'm speaking to right now, but I just felt the Lord put this on my heart. There's families in here that have been living in, in a turbulent environment. Your, your home environment has been real tough. And you know what? There's not been repentance in your home. I'm just going to be honest. In your life and in your heart, you've kind of like been unstable. You've kind of, yeah, a little bit of repentance here and there, maybe you know a little bit, but you haven't really... Uh, taking the advice of the Bible that we've been talking about today. You've got to live that transformed lifestyle. And in order to do that, you got to lay some things down, okay? This is why there's been turbulence in your home because your kids have watched you, okay? But there's been areas in your own life that you haven't repented of. And so it's it's given a mixed signal to those that are watching. I'm saying this in love. It's It's given people a mixed signal. And so this is why God is calling you out. That's why he brought you here. He, he's calling you by name and he's saying, look, there's been a few areas that you kept, you know, you're still drinking, you're still doing things you shouldn't be doing and you know it, you know what it is. And so, and whatever it is, it may not be drinking, it may be something else, but God is speaking to a lot of people right now. 
And he's saying the reason why it's been turbulent in your home, you've been having some problems in your marriage and your kids is because there's been areas that you haven't given up. And you love the Lord. Listen, you love the Lord. So, some of you are tearing up right now. You love the Lord. No one's questioning that you love the Lord. In fact, I believe you're saved. But you've had areas of open door in your life because for whatever reason, you felt you weren't able to get over it. You know, I don't have the strength, Todd. I don't know how I'm going to do it. No, you do. You have the strength because when you're weak, he's strong. And so when you call upon his name, you're going to be saved. So what, what God is telling you to do right now is call upon him in those areas that you perceive as weakness and say, Lord, I need your strength. And he's going to start fixing and mending your marriage. He's going to start fixing and mending your situation. You're always blaming your spouse. Listen, listen to me. I had to come to this conclusion. I am no better than you. Okay, I had to realize that I was the cause of a lot of my problems, friends. You you see a version of Todd right now that has been many, many years in the Lord. But, you know, if you would have been with me in my earlier years, and, and I'm still being dealt with. Trust me, I'm still being dealt with. I want a good marriage. I love my wife so much. And you know what? Our marriage is good. But it's taken many, many years to be good. I mean, it's it's work. It's work, friends. And she's a doll. I mean, she's amazing. But, you know, does she do things that annoy me sometimes? Sure. Do I things that annoy her sometimes? But we've come to a place that we fight for our marriage. We fight for our, we, we have a deep love. And the reason is because we've laid down ourselves. We, we've come to the end of ourselves. And listen, we got a daughter. You better believe she's like a sponge. If I yell or if I do something, she's like, daddy, you shouldn't do that. I mean, so there's areas in your life. And I just believe right now God's doing, this is what he wants to do. That's why I talk about this today. Before we go to where we're going as a community, before you go to your ultimate calling, and before we go as a church into full-blown revival, we have got to understand the significance of repentance. That's why God had me talk about this today. Okay. Uh, as many as I love, I rebuke and I chase and therefore be zealous and repent. Repentance is a response to God's love and his discipline. It requires zeal and fervor in turning away from sin and aligning ourselves with God's will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just feel the anointing right now. here. Hallelujah. Somebody, some, some of you are snapping into this right now. You, this is something's coming on you. It's the spirit of God. On my best day of preaching, I can't make you feel anything. What you're feeling right now is the truth of the word of God that's bearing witness in your spirit to break off age-old demonic curses on your family, to break off generational things on your family that you, you didn't understand, I didn't understand. We needed to repent. We need to repent of these things. We need to turn from them because that comes before the salvation. Many of you say, well, I've been in Christ for 20 years, but I never repented of this thing. Well, do it today. Do it today. Get, get that thing out, up and out of your life, up and out of your marriage, up and out of your home. Stop blaming your spouse. Listen, they may have some issues. I'm not saying my wife don't have some issues. She does. But so do I. But you know what? It's like this. You got to turn it around. You know, turn, turn the pointing around. What can I do better? How can I be a better, more godly spouse? You know what? Maybe I have some brokenness that I got to deal with. You ever think of that? Maybe there's been some areas in your life where you've had open doors and you didn't even realize it. And it's literally like, a, a, a hole, like you know, when there's an airplane and there's a hole in that airplane, I mean, everything gets sucked out. Right, that's what happens when you're in an airplane. There's a hole, right? Everything sucked out. This is what's going on in some of your lives. I'm speaking because I love you. And listen, the Lord chastens me too. He's got me on a short leash. I'm no better than anybody watching this. But he wants to set up for success right now. Some of us are dealing with marital issues because we have not closed the door to all the areas. And then we're blaming our spouse for it. No, it's you. You're the problem. You're the problem. I'm the problem. You understand what I'm saying? We've got to humble ourselves and realize, you know what? I got to have grace and mercy for this woman. I got to have grace and mercy for this man. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning. I'm not saying in every situation. Listen, sometimes there's abusive situations and there's nothing you can do. But as a Christian, we do everything that we can. And I'm not, I'm not coming against you if you've been divorced or things like that. There's even times in the Bible where it says it's okay to get divorced. And even if you didn't, you, even if you got divorced and it wasn't one of those things, God will forgive you because what happens? When you repent, what happens? Blot it out. See a forgetfulness. But we've got to repent. We've got to turn. It's a, it's a transformed mind state. We are no longer the same. We're not conformed to that sin. We don't have conformity in our life. We don't have that area of sin anymore. Amen? All right. I'm almost done here. Uh, Acts 17.30, Acts 17.30, truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. 
Okay, this is the last scripture of the day. Repentance is commanded from who? From God to who? To all humanity. All humanity. Me, you, everybody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Repentance is a command from God to all humanity. It's not optional, but it's essential for what? For reconciliation with God and for restoration of fellowship with him. Who is he? He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. We want, we want, we need, especially in these times, we need fellowship with God and his Holy Spirit. And what blocks us from that? The only thing, because who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall famine, shall nakedness, shall persecution, shall peril or sword? Nothing. But guess what it does? Sin. Sin separates us from God. We were separated from God. Jesus came. He died on the cross for our sin. He shed his blood. And now what's happened is we have a connection back to a holy God. But there's one thing that stops that connection is when we have open door sin and we have not repented of it. So will you join me this, today in repenting? Repenting. I know some of you have been thinking about something throughout the show. You know you got an area. There's something. You've been lusting on certain things. You've been looking at stuff you shouldn't look at. You've been doing things you shouldn't do. You have anger. You have gluttony issues. You have certain things, addictions, and things in areas of your life that you've been holding on to because you honestly have just been trying to hold on because you just say, I'm too weak or I don't want to give up this last thing. You know, it's just the last thing. I'm a pretty good person, but there's this one area. God is saying, lay it all down and you're about to have a transformative situation in your life. Your life is not going to be the same. You are going to the next level in your walk in Jesus Christ. You're going to have a stronger anointing on you than ever before. Listen to me. Things are going to change. God is going to open doors for you. His favor is going to be on you. His blessing is going to be on you. The joy, that refreshing, that peace that passes understanding, it's available to you right now. Close the door to sin in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the word today. It was transformative because when the word is spoken, it's a lamp unto our feet, and it is indeed transformative. And what was spoke today was nothing but truth. It was from your word, and Lord God, it is your desire. You want us to be transformed. You want us to be living out a lifestyle of consecration. We've got to lay down these areas, the, the, the vain imaginations, the, the covetedness of other people's lives and their marriages or whatever it is that they're doing on Facebook or social media. And we say, oh, their life's so much better. I want that. Lord, we got to lay down these things and we got to focus on the call that you've given us. So I just thank you for your anointing on this message today. I thank you for this amazing group of people. I pray that they would not feel uh, like they're beat down right now. I pray that they would not feel weary. I pray they would not feel condemned. You say there's therefore no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. But in order for us to be in you, the very first thing you say is to turn from our wickedness, to have a transformed state of mind. And so that's why we're talking about this today. This is what sets us up for success. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. So we just thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for this word. Thank you for this word, Lord Jesus. I feel the fire in here right now. Thank you, God. Thank you for this word, Lord. I just feel people's lives are being transformed right now. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence on this broadcast right now. We thank you that you are renewing our minds. You're renewing our strength, God. We are not done. We're not finished. Lord, you have many things ahead for us. Let us fill right now. Let us recharge. Filled in the name of Jesus. Filled. Filled in the name of Jesus. Recharged in the name of Jesus. Joy in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Marriage is restored right now in Jesus' name. Humble hearts. Repentant hearts. Let us not have a hard heart. I break hard hearts right now in Jesus' name. I break unforgiveness right now in Jesus' name. Hard-heartedness, you got to go. Soften the hearts of the remnant, Lord God. Let us be like David's. Let us be good repenters. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name, thank you, God. Hallelujah. All right, here's what we're going to do. we got about one minute left. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you the opportunity to do that right now. Remember, it's not just raising your hand. It's having a transformed, renewed state of mind. That means turning from your old lifestyle. If you want to do that today, go ahead and lift your hand. I am truly repentant, Pastor Todd. I want to make a decision today to serve God with all my heart. I'm turning from my wickedness. I'm turning from my past, and I'm giving my life to Jesus. If that's you, just lift your hand right now. That's me. That's me. If you're lifting your hand right now, wherever you are, if you're by yourself, if you're with other people, if you're watching in your car, you're listening on a podcast, wherever you're listening right now, that's you. That's me, Pastor Todd. Just acknowledge it. If you acknowledge right now, he's going to acknowledge you. Thank you, Jesus. 
I just want to pray for you. Lord, you, you, you see every hand that's raised right now. Will you just repeat this prayer? We just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for sending your son. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. I will serve you all the days of my life. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you are Lord. And I now transform my mind and repent of my sin in Jesus' name. Amen. What a powerful morning. Hey, listen, if you just made that decision for the first time or if you recommitted your life, will you reach out to me at pastortodd.org, pastortodd.org. We would love to hear from you. We'd love to give you a Bible. We'd love for you to come out and visit us in Hendersonville on Friday nights or this Sunday for uh, Easter, you know, it's Resurrection Day. We're going to actually have a Sunday service instead of a Friday service this week. So this next week, we're going to have this broadcast on Friday night, not in person, but then in person on Sunday, only for this week for Resurrection Day. If you can come on out, we'd love to have you come out. 768 Forest Retreat Road, and that's in Hendersonville, Tennessee, and that's 37075 Sunday, only this week at 6 p.m. on Resurrection Day. We sure, we sure would love to see you. But listen, if you accept the Jesus and you can't get here, I still want to hear from you okay reach out to me at pastortodd.org we love you and we bless you in jesus name we'll see you soon all my words fall short i got nothing new how could i express all my gratitude i could sing these songs as I often do But every song must end And you never do So I throw up my hands And praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a
praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know it's not much I'm nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing high Are you tired of censorship? Eager to join a remnant community featuring live uncensored programming? Well, look no further. Introducing the Todd Coconado Ministries new TCM app. Your gateway to great unfiltered live programming. The app is loaded with exciting features. Get ready to dive into a world of faith, truth, and community like never before. And accessing the TCM app is easier than ever. It's available on Google Play, iTunes, Roku, and Amazon. Break free from censorship. Download the TCM app now and connect with the Remnant community in a powerful way. Join us in this new era of connection, faith, and truth. Todd Coconado Ministries, where faith meets freedom.